a very good afternoon honorable ek minute shuru hoye geche shikant da okay start hi sir a very good afternoon honorable resource persons colleagues and audience on behalf of the organizing committee bahrampur girls college and the physiological society of india i extend a warm welcome to all of you for the second day of the three day national webinar on covid 19 fighting together and moving forward the eminent resource persons for the first session of the day are professor nilkanto chakraborty dr moushmi shikdar and professor debashish maiti i would now like to request dr sriti ratan tripathi the head department of physiology bahrampur girls college and convener of the webinar to kindly introduce professor nilkanto chakraborty thank you over to dr tripathi yes dr nilkanto chakraborty is an eminent professor department of physiology university of calcutta he had completed his phd from bose institute kolkata under university of calcutta later he completed his post doctoral research from department of physiology morao school of medicine atlanta he served at rammon college and later held the reader position in asian pradhan center for neurosciences in university of calcutta before joining the department of physiology in university of calcutta his research interests include aging and neurodegenerative diseases like parkinsons alzheimer epilepsy molecular and cellular studies brain imaging and integrative physiology of cellular and molecular cognition and neuro computational approach of cognitive physiology he has received several prestigious awards and is member of various prestigious bodies professor chakraborty will deliver his lecture entitled brain as the target of covid 19 professor chakraborty please sir yes sir yes thank you uh, dr nidadam uh dr sitiratan sipati i'm thankful to uh, dr shida principal of the borodpur girls college for uh, arrangement of such a uh, interesting webinar on covid 19 and uh, obviously the association with the platform of the psi and uh, also thankful to uh, thankful that uh, uh, for giving me opportunity to share my views on covid 19 so in my topic i will restrict it my topic on two by molecules one is the receptor of the virus of covid 19 in our body that is angiotensin converting enzyme type The receptor of the virus which causes the COVID-19, and the second by molecule I will stick it on the MMT9, that is our report uh, in life science that uh, the metano uh, matrix metano proteins or proteinase type nine. Because so many reports are coming day by day, in every day it is uncountable. It is not. I mean, so much reports are coming uh, on COVID-19, and uh, among which uh, I, I think uh, more convinced, very few are more convincing. And so many work uh, still needs to find the relation between the brain and COVID-19. Actually, uh, the COVID-19. Okay, I have to go to the slide. Is it okay, Situ Atul sir? The slide. Uh, is... Slide is okay, but it will be there. I am going to I am going to make it full screen. Is it okay now? Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So the uh, 
for which a uh, line is actually it is an infection, viral infection in the lung that of we know and I will very much known to us now that the infection in the lung that causes the cough difficulties in the breathing, shortness of the breathing, chest pain, I mean severe case the acute respiratory disease. There is a very common symptom that uh, actually appears because the infection appears in the upper lung and or the uh, uh, upper respiratory tract or the lower respiratory system in the alveoli of the lung. In addition to the uh, effects of the lung, uh, there are so many reports on different physiological systems, particularly the cardiac system and heart and uh, endocrine system, diabetic condition. There are so many reports on diarrhea, gas, gastric circulation, other effects like renal, hepatic, uh, dermatological and the uh, appearance of the, the um, uh, embolism, the blood clot, the blood clot, the blood clot, the blood clot gradually appear in COVID-19 uh, uh, situation, in the patient. In addition, the several symptoms, most of the cases, the COVID-19, they have basic neurological symptoms, that is, uh, head, headache, dizziness, or uh, that is very important, uh, the, the significant uh, uh, symptom, the single symptom is insomnia. Insomnia and uh, loss of taste. Okay, so uh, even the stroke has been reported in a partner to COVID-19. So when is the target? Uh, now it is considered. Uh, although the percentage of the population, I mean, most of the patients, 50 or more than 60 percent patients who have a cough, fever, and infection of the uh, virus of COVID-19, and uh, they have headache or uh, dizziness or uh, loss of smell, uh, very common report. Uh, in addition, uh, there are so many reports that coming uh, in the field to, to, to define a lot of symptoms. Uh, although the pathophysiological uh, aspect of the effect is not clearly known. So what is COVID-19 and what is this virus and how it acts, that we have to know, uh, just I, I go uh, to few slides because uh, the, it is very essential to uh, discuss these things to include two biomolecules, that is the angiotensin converting enzyme to the receptor of the virus and other protein MMP9. Okay, so first in, the, in this slide, uh, uh, the, 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 the image actually uh, is the image indicates the, the structure of the virus. Okay, the virus is, the, is called the SARS CoV 2. Why it is 2? Because the SARS CoV that appeared first time in, that was found in um, uh, uh, in 2002 to 4, 5, in, um, uh, uh, first time it was uh, uh, found, and uh, the virus which is called this COVID-19, that is called a virus disease 2019, it is called uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, because the little difference, there is a difference of the nucleotide and the amino acid composition, although there is a difference, but most of the cases, that is 79 percent nucleotide is close to the, very similar to the SARS-CoV-1 or SARS-CoV, and 75 percent amino acid uh, sequence is similar to the, similar uh, in the both uh, viruses. And it has been found that the uh, spike protein, uh, this particular protein, the spike protein of the virus, this virus is the RNA virus, okay, and inside is the RNA. Uh, the spike protein actually recognizes a uh, host protein uh, within the lung epithelium that is angiotensin converting enzyme 2. Angiotensin converting enzyme 2. So they have catalytic site, benzylic site here. This is a presentation that was reported in 2004. That is again, uh, past 
first Hydra Press was found in the earth and causes the epidemic. Uh, here is a site where the, uh, the FAC2 recognizes the uh, spike protein, the carbonic H1, the of the spike protein of Hydra. So, what is FAC2? FAC2, the angiotensin converting enzyme 2, is a metal carboxylate. And it is associated with a renin angiotensin. So I, 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 I do not have uh, the scope here to go to detail to the renin angiotensin, but I will briefly mention it. And it is well recognized that the FE2 is the receptor of SARS CoV 2. It is gene, this enzyme, uh, uh, this protein is a gene, beta lobe, which is a gene containing uh, protein and has the membrane bound area, has membrane bound area uh, and uh, domain and also the extracellular domain, okay. Uh, where uh, there is a two sites, uh, one of the spike protein binding site uh, where the gene is uh, uh, incorporated in the particular area where here is the gene, you can see the gene where is causing the protein to the amino acid, protein form. And the other part, very close to the membrane, then the site, which is called endopeptidase activity, where the other protein, which is present in the host, uh, cellular, uh, in the human uh, host cells, they, there are so many, I mean, there are two proteins which actually control the activity of the uh, AC2. What is the activity? One protein that is called a, a Adam 17, this Adam 17 actually is, ha, can sleep at the endopeptide site of AC2 and they can release the part of the extracellular part as a sleep, it is a soluble part. When this Adam 17 by uh, the activity bypasses and infection occurs, then Another protein is present in the host cell that is TMPRSS2 in association with the another protein, furin, which helps to recognize the S1 uh, subunit of the spike protein to bind with the bind with the uh, FE2 extracellular domain, uh, the gene uh, 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 binding cell. Okay. So that is the very excellent, uh, 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 I mean, uh, 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 pathophysiological condition that, that when, but one more thing is that the soluble portion of the extracellular AC2 can bind also the receptor in virus to its spike protein. The important message is here uh, that the AC2 remains in membrane bound form as well as soluble bound form, soluble form. Both membrane bound and soluble bound, they can bind the virus to the spike protein. And here, when, in the membrane, when it is in membrane bound condition, with the help of uh, the other proteins, including the TNT, TNT rs 2 and furin, uh, they help to bind the virus. When it does not happen, uh, or the, uh, depending on the activity around 17, Level of soluble AC2 increases or there is a variation of the level of soluble with the membrane bound. Now the question is when the AC2 in membrane bound condition and binds with the virus, this virus gets internalization with the gets entry to the cell and causes infection. But when the AC2 remains in soluble form, it binds with the virus, but does not cause infection. And uh, that is the field, uh, the topic on which the people are working uh, to find the uh, 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 to, uh, to find the pathophysiological cause of uh, asymptomatic condition. All this is not uh, established till now, but there is a explanation here. 
of the speech presentation that after internalization of uh, getting entry into the uh, cell uh, uh, binding to the AC2, forming a complex with PMPRSS2 and QRIS, they releases, the virus releases the RNA, RNA uses the machinery, the ribosome, uh, collision formation within the, uh, with the host cell and causes the formation of the period of the new virus to release it, or the infection. Okay, so this typical established uh, genetic presentation of the mode of uh, infection. And from the very beginning, the people are trying to use the antiviral drugs to, to, to block the replication of the virus within the host cell, although uh, it did not work. Others targeted, there are so many, uh, I mean, uh, 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 you, all of you know that uh, uh, more than uh, 60 or 70, whatever we have found, more than 67 drugs have been tied with uh, have been tied with uh, to to uh, uh, to uh, protect the infection or proliferation of the uh, infection of COVID-19. But okay, uh, none of these drugs actually work well, uh, and that's why the people are now scientists are trying to find the antibody, I mean, uh, vaccine against spike protein and also the. Um, uh, nucleoid with the proteins uh, against the COVID-19 to get some fruitful approach of the treatment. In respect to the SE2, as a receptor of the SARS-CoV-2, the virus, uh, which causes the COVID-19, there may be a several possibilities. Whether the virus after binding to SE2 can directly cause a cytosoxic virus, there is no clear response, I mean, uh, uh, evidence. Second thing is, after binding to the SE2, whether it alters the radin and nutrition system, you know, in the, uh, the, who are in the, uh, in the uh, field of the physiology, we very much, uh, um, I mean, we know that uh, what is the renin angiotensin system and how it is the endocrine system is associated with the uh, vaso cardiovascular, alter, uh, I mean, the control of the cardiovascular uh, or the effects of the cardiovascular system, uh, cardiovascular system that is blood pressure. So, uh, actually, the uh, renin which uh, comes from the kidney converts into a liver angiotensin gene to angiotensin 1. And uh, in the classical way, the antigen one produces two, one eight, that causes the data constriction. In lung, by AC1, not by two. In lung, there is another enzyme that type two, which converts the, this one eight antigen two to one seven antigen uh, two. By this way, or in the heart, to this pathway, antigen one nine to one seven. And that angiotensin 1, 7, this 2, 1, 7, calls the vasodilation. Vasodilation. So just opposite, it calls the opposite effect of the classical angiotensin. Uh, but uh, after entry of the virus and binding to the AC2, whether it alters the radio angiotensin system or not, it is clearly not evidence. What has been found? that the binding of the virus with the receptor causes cytochrome release, local huge cytochrome release, uh, which causes the uh, hypersensitivity and the alteration cellular modulation within the epithelium for thickening of the basal membrane, remodeling of the cellular area, and loss of elasticity of the alveolar lining and therefore the lungs does not, uh, 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 do not work properly and uh, shortness of breathing appears in the adverse condition is causing the respiratory failure. There are other reports that came to the field that the formation of the clotting. So these have been well reported 
uh, have been well reported uh, till now that the cytochrome uh, uh, storm, formation of cytochrome storm by uh, infection within the lung, in the local area, and failure of the uh, lung function, and also embolism or blood uh, uh, formation in the blood. Now I'm going to the few evidences which can uh, provide that AC2 may be the, uh, I mean the brain may be the target of COVID-19 based on the presence of AC2 in brain. Actually AC2 expression has been found in lots of areas in the brain. Here I have given the list you see in the cortical areas, different cortical areas, hippocampus, different paraventricular uh, nuclei of the brain, hippocampus, like paraventricular nuclei, uh, 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 sorry, uh, sorry, it is a hypo, hypothalamus uh, and uh, hippocampal area, substantia nigra, um, and rapid nuclei, uh, ventral tegmental area of the hypothalamus, ventricles. Uh, locus cellular, there are so many areas in the brain who actually express the AC2. The question is whether these AC, how, whether, how get entry, I mean the uh, virus gets entry into the brain. If, if there is AC2 in the brain, then there will be chance of infection within the brain. Now, we have to find out that what is the pathway of entry of the virus to the brain. This is also found in at the different cellular level, like excitatory neurons, glutamatergic neurons, immunitary gavagic neurons, astrocytes, microcellular also get expressed as AC2, particularly hippocampus and Frontal cortex, uh, and that's why uh, the cardiac patients who have a severe respiratory failure, uh, they have uh, they develop actually uh, uh, dementia-like symptoms in certain cases that have been found recently. Uh, that, uh, and uh, very interesting uh, finding I can uh, show you that. Uh, the MRI study also uh, has shown that the uh, changes in gray and white matter in certain brains. Okay. After AC2, I would like to mention another biomolecule, matrix metalloproteins 9. That is our report in life science and that appeared online in 10th July. And I'm thankful to my scholar, Sumoji Thalia, uh, who is working on the Bioinformatic and computational biology on brain function, neuro, uh, physio and pharmacological aspect. Uh, she did a great job, and I got support from uh, Pondicherry University, Dr. Professor Basant Chetibari, and also uh, Dr. Alok Ghoshchudri from Vidyasagar College. And, uh, and finally, we reported. The, you know, the new finding, I think this is the first time we propose that MMT9 may be the target of the biomolecule, uh, targeted biomolecule uh, in association of the COVID-19. So what we did, we used the microarray data of SARS-CoV patient that happened uh, long before because, you know, we checked there was no uh, um, microarray data uh, which we could not found at that time, I think uh, even it is not available uh, with the uh, 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 blood uh, of the patient, COVID-19 patient, that's why we found a um, complete uh, microarray data of patients of 10, 10, 10 or 12, 12, 12 patients um, from uh, infected with uh, uh, SARS-CoV and we use the raw data 
and we analyzed the microarray data from where ultimately through computational approach we found the NMT9 is the molecule upgradation. So the infection comes up. Uh, a, a expression, over expression of the uh, over expression of the NMT9 and in addition to this finding we also found that uh, using, we used 65, more than 65 I think, 65 drugs uh, we found that the two drugs, chloroquine and melatonin they may react with or have a uh, cooperativity with NMT9 uh, to prevent the COVID-19. That was our uh, report. However, it needs a uh, experimental clinical study. And uh, I would like to mention that that we reported, in a, in a, our report appeared in the 10th July, 10th or 12th July. And uh, on, after a few days, we have found another report that was independently done by a Norway group they worked on the 39 COVID patients, blood from the 39 COVID patients, and they have found that MMT9 actually in blood in PJs in the in the initial stage of the infection uh, on those patients who have a severe respiratory failure. So that is a very excellent uh, support that we got uh, uh, in, support, in, in favor of our findings. MMT9 actually it is a metano uh, protein that acts on the extracellular proteins and causes the cellular remodeling, the structure of the cell, and it is associated with the information. Uh, it is worthwhile to mention that the MMT9 is also the gene containing protein. Uh, it, it contains the gene. Uh, within its active site, the catalytic driven site. MMT9 has a wide uh, cellular, uh, I mean, the uh, physiological activity, uh, pathophysiological activity, uh, particularly uh, alteration of the extracellular matrix and others. In extracellular matrix, it is mainly associated with the beta species of cancer activities, uh, particular condition, and in other cases uh, it is reported lung disease, inflammatory condition, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and also neurodegenerative disease like stroke, epilepsy, uh, Alzheimer, symptom associated with Alzheimer, I mean dementia, and uh, brain cancer. So MMP9 may be the target of the one of the biomolecule in COVID-19 infection, COVID-19 in, uh, condition of the Tascop to a viral infection in addition to ACE2. ACE2. Now, uh, I'm giving few examples, uh, convincing example uh, that whether the COVID-19 is really associated with the alteration of brain function or not. Because this is our uh, speculation that uh, as the brain contains, brain contains the ACE2 and also the MMT9 is associated with the pathology, pathophysiological condition in the, of brain. So the COVID-19, in, in COVID-19, there may be possibility of, if uh, there may be possibility of infection if the virus is entry. Now we get entry, that is the question. First of all, I'm giving the excellent uh, direct evidence that this is a follow-up study of MRI study where the gray matter and white matter volume was measured and we have uh, the follow-up uh, follow study with the COVID-19 patients and they have found that the several areas, particularly the olfactory cortex, hippocampus, insula, singlet gyrus, you know, all these are involved with the cognitive function, uh, hippocampus, uh, for, uh, memory loss, okay. And uh, they have also found the uh, changes in right cingulate gyrus and left hippocampus associated with the smell loss. So actually, uh, most of the cases, the patient, more than 50% uh, cases, the COVID-19 patient, patients, patients, uh, they, 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 they lost their uh, uh, smell sensation. 
the explanation of the pathophysiological condition we can explain in by two ways. One is the uh, uh, in, uh, changes in periphery, another is the spatial. In the periphery, what will be the explanation? After the infection, due to cause of cytochrome storm and uh, cellular remodeling by MLP9, there will be a chance of loss of sensory input in the uh, olfactory uh, uh, receptor. Other one that is reported in, uh, very recently that the changes in the gray matter, white matter volume in hippocampus, left hippocampus, and the right singular gyrus is associated with the smell uh, sensation. So, that will be the cause of both central nervous system and peripheral, also the peripheral and central nervous system in COVID 19 condition for loss of smell. Gradually, uh, there are so many. I have already mentioned that uh, uh, there are so many symptoms have been have been found uh, in uh, the COVID-19 patients in follow-up studies, including the peripheral nervous system and also the central nervous system. But most of the cases are supposed to be associated with the inflammation-related uh, 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 causes. However, the direct, there is no direct evidence that uh, how it happens. Whatever the uh, explanation till now we have is that the after ingression of the coronavirus, if it gets entry into the brain, there will be uh, several ways by which they can cause the brain uh, alteration in the brain uh, structure or function. It may cause the direct effect or maybe indirectly through inflammation or hypoxia related. Okay. So, uh, the question, the last question is how they get entry. The uh, three ways have been proposed. First of all, two olfactory bulbs. Because it is primary the area of the infection, the primary area is the lung and respiratory tract. So there may be a chance of entry of virus and AC2 is present there. And the chance of uh, entry of the virus to olfactory bulbs to the brain. Okay, this is the number one sus suspect that there will be a possibility of entry through all this result. Second one is the possibility to uh, invasion through the blood brain barrier. Okay, uh, uh, in the brain. Third possibility is the entry through, through the venal uh, uh, nerve coming from the intestine and also uh, the lung to the brain. Why interesting? Because there are so many, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, it is reported the AC2 also found in, in the intestinal uh, um, uh, epithelium. And uh, diarrhea happens in certain uh, uh, patients of the COVID-19. So there may be possibility. However, these are the speculation, and uh, uh, people are now trying to find out who are in the field of the neuroscience that what will be the possibility of the entry of the virus. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chakraborty, for the informative insight into the different aspects of effects of COVID-19 on the intricacies of cerebral regions. It is to announce that the if the audience have any queries, you are requested to kindly post them on the comment box in the YouTube channel. We will get back to them later on and uh, be uploading the website. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, madam. That's funny, madam. You have to wait or I can I can stop here. Yes, you can stop here, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, you okay, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Move to the next picture. I would like to request Dr. Ripa to kindly introduce our next resource person, Dr. Shrikdar. Now I am introducing uh, Dr. Moshumi Shikdar. Dr. Moshumi Shikdar. Uh, 
is associate professor in physiology uh, in the department of life science in the presidency university he has a teaching experience of more than 20 years both at the undergraduate and the postgraduate level as he started her career as a lecturer in physiology in west bengal education service she completed her doctoral degree from barwar university in antibiotic uh, resistance plasmids of staphylococcus aureus her research interest includes studying the antimicrobial and anti inflammatory effects of various herbal and synthetic compounds studying the amelioration of the damage caused by electromagnetic radiation emitted by mobile phones in rat model by nutrition supplementation and assessment of the nutritional status of children and women of different age groups and profession madam please yes thank you sridharatan for that very nice introduction and i am also thankful to dakshani both of you are my students and i am sure that many of you in the audience are my students so and i am at the outset i am also thankful to bahrampur girls college and also the physiological society of india for providing me a platform from where i can talk to you now please let me continue with my talk Can you hear me? Can you? Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Slide is visible. Okay. Slide. But very size small. Size to small. It will borrow quite a bit. अच्छा दारा borrow quite a bit. Sir, correct. No, no. Ah. How is it? वेरी यूनिक सिचुएशन दैट वी पर हैप्स वी डिड नॉट इवन इमेजिन दैट वुड हैपन नाउ दिस सिचुएशन दैट वाज नॉट फेस इवन बाय आवर पेरेंट्स सो दिस इज एन एबनॉर्मल सिचुएशन बट वी हैव गॉट यूज्ड टू दिस न्यू नॉर्मल वे ऑफ लाइफ नाउ देयर हैव बीन मेनी हेडलाइंस फ्रॉम येस्टरडे इन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म पीपल हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट अबाउट द डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द कोविड-19 पेंडेमिक now one of the very few important things in common people are talking about is that you should have a very good nutritional status if you have to survive this pandemic and food has been a very important topic the availability of food the availability of nutritious food and its the, the role of nutrition in covid 19 so if we look back if we look then there was an headline even all of us we saw on the television sets that in the usa gallons of liters of milk that was just thrown into drains even there was a where there was fresh food they were being drained they were being dumped into uh, dumped as waste because the schools hospitals etc these were there were they were closed so there were no people to take those there was no 
proper measures to store that excess food. At the same time, there was also people who went hungry. So this is, as you can see in the slide, this is the headlines of New York Times on April 12, 2020, which says that there are empty shelves, but farms put food to waste, milk sacks and produce buried and dumped because this surplus food could not be used because the schools, hotels, restaurants were closed. And this surplus food, it would not be distributed because of the lockdown to nourish the needy. And also there was, because there was a limited ability to store and distribute perishable food. Now, similar was the case of India. Due to the nationwide lockdown, there were many people who went without food. But on the other hand, many fresh vegetables and fruits, they had to be simply be just drained in they had to be just thrown into garbage dumps because they could not be stored now this is uh, an article which was published in the hindu on 1st april 2020 you can see these tomatoes they are being just being dumped into as wastage and also this report shares a report where a farmer he says that he had to give his fruits for free on addition, he had to spend about 10,000 rupees in order to clear the garbage that was the rotten fruits into, uh, into a tank nearby. So, and another aspect which we have come across, which we have been very familiar is panic buying. As soon as the lockdown was announced, people went to the markets, to the shops to buy food, to stock food, to hoard food as a result of which it led to some abnormal consequences. There was an increase in the food prices. People who had stocked food, they, there was overconsumption and there was unequal distribution of products. Even I have seen very rickshaw pullers in our area, they could not stock food. So they went only with 20 rupees and they bought only a kilo of rice. Whereas there were people, many people who stocked food that was much more than necessary. Now, let us come to the risk factors of COVID-19. What are nutrition plays an important role in combating COVID-19? But what are the risk factors of COVID-19 which are associated with nutrition? Now, the first risk factor, people of all ages, they can be infected by the new coronavirus, but people who are aged above 60, they have got an increased risk of becoming severely ill. Com com coupled with this, people who have comorbidities, that is people with pre-existing non-communicable diseases, they appear to be more, more vulnerable and becoming severely ill with the virus. Now, what are these non-communicable diseases? As was talked yesterday by Shonjit De, Professor Shonjit De, these are people who have cardiovascular problems, those with hypertension or persons who have had a cardiac arrest or stroke. People with chronic respiratory diseases, diabetes, cancer, they are at a greater risk of suffering from COVID-19. And in addition, smokers, they are also more likely to be more vulnerable to COVID-19. And especially those people who have been smoking for years so that they have got increased oxygen needs or they have got a reduced lung capacity. Now, smoking, it also exerts another effect. It can be because the cigarette has to be held by the hand. So there may be incidences where the virus can be transmitted from the head to the lips, where, from where it can enter into the respiratory tract. And also in India, there are places where hookah bars, where people share the same smoking tube. So in that case, infections may spread from one person to another. Now, these are some of the headlines which we saw during the COVID-19 infection worldwide. Now, almost all the countries who have been affected by COVID-19, they went in for nationwide lockdown. Then also there was 
self quarantine temporary closing of businesses and all these factors they uh, affected the normal food related practices now people who showed acute respiratory systems disease systems they were requested to stay homes restaurants take away offers they were all they had closed schools were closed offices closed we all have to we all are still working from home these are all the headlines which we had seen during covid and each and every day the number of people who are affected and who are dying due to covid that is constantly increasing now whatever it is all these we are all uh, uh, we all agree on one issue that good nutrition it can help a proper diet it can help to combat covid 19 now nutrition good nutrition it can affect our health not only good nutrition but mad proper improper nutrition that can also affect our health as we know that overeating it can lead to a number of infections whereas malnutrition it can also lead to many infectious diseases and nutrition is compromised in patients who have severe immune def def deficiency and we all know that a proper nutrition it can give us a healthy immune system which can help us to fight or ward off any serious infections to which we may be exposed now let us talk about some of the nutritional management strategies to prevent and combat 19 now nutrition it is perhaps the only one factor which is which can be used to keep people safe and healthy during these pandemic times even if a person who at the minimum who takes just reference nutrient intake or the recommended diet recommended dietary allowance of different nutrients they can ward off severe infections now nutrition it also has another role because improper nutrition it can increase the load of non communicable diseases so a proper nutrition it is also needed to prevent the load of non communicable diseases as i told you that non communicable diseases such as cardiovascular problems then uh, diabetes cancer they can be caused due to improper nutrition nutritional habits so in order to maintain a healthy immune system a special attention must be given to maintaining a normal diet a healthy lifestyle an exercise regime with minimal stress malnourishment it can cause an extra burden on the elderly and also the children so if we go through literature survey what are the nutrition requirements for patients who have already been affected with covid now the first one is energy intake it has been found literature survey has showed that about 25 kilocalories per kg per day energy is required for covid-19 patients who are already in the critical care units whereas 31.5 kilocalories per kg per day of energy is required for patients who are in the rehabilitation units to compensate for the energy debt the next one is the protein intake it should be increased to 1.3 grams per kg per body weight compared to 1 gram per kg body weight because it will provide for the supply of branched chain amino acids which will in turn prevent muscle loss due to enhanced catabolism by inflammatory mediators and also to increase the respiratory muscle strength during covid-19 infection this is because people who are suffering from covid they are in a state of negative nitrogen balance 
the carbohydrate intake it should be limited to 2 grams per kg per day and it should not exceed 150 grams in critical covid-19 patients with respiratory failure because increased carbohydrate consumption can lead to increased carbon dioxide production that will reduce the respiratory quotients people suffering from covid-19 they already they are already suffering from respiratory distress so increased carbon dioxide it will lead to more and more trouble for them next we come to the recommended lipid intake now covid-19 patients with in critical condition should be provided with 1.5 grams per kg per day of lipid and they should be careful that medium and long chain fatty acids and there should be an increase in the proportion of omega 3 and omega 9 fatty acids because arachidonic acid omega 6 fatty acids are precursors to prostaglandins and leukotrienes whereas omega 3 fatty acids they downplay the inflammatory responses by their effects on eicosanoid production and specific cytokines now vitamins and mineral supplements they play an important role and it has been seen that a complex of vitamin b zinc magnesium selenium is administered as routine supplements to covid-19 patients as they play their role as micronutrients and they are important for covid-19 treatment now let us come to especially those vitamins and minerals which are required now these are some of these vitamins and minerals which play an important role in covid-19 they are copper folate iron selenium magnesium zinc vitamins a b6 b12 c d e now it is always advised even in normal conditions to have a portion of fresh fruits and vegetables green vegetables in our diet so that because they are our source of dietary fibers and they are also a source of vitamins and minerals which act as antioxidants so this is as you can see in the slides the advisory by the government is to eat fruits which are fresh which are local and seasonal there is no need to go for expensive fruits or those imported fruits and but those fruits should be ripe but they must not be overripe and they should be free from blemishes and all the fruits they should be cleaned thoroughly with clean drinking water before consumption now we specially come to vitamin c vitamin c it is available in lemons amla oranges all those fruits that we know it is easily available and it has been it is being advised by all agencies to have at least one or two lemons per day with warm water because it will help to it it will help us to fight the con, uh, corona pandemic now these are as you can see in the slides these are the roles per which vitamin c plays it helps in pulmonary protection against copd then it has also cardioprotective effects because it reduces oxidized ldl it also reduces arterial plaque formation it is anti inflammatory because it helps in cytokine production it improves cytokine chemotaxis it deactivates nf kappa beta pathway it exerts antihistaminic effects it also helps in anti-inflammatory metabolic secretion and it is also well known that vitamin c has an antioxidative effect it is perhaps one of the best antioxidants that can protect tissues and cells by preventing oxidative burst it also minimizes infection and systems it also demonstrates antimicrobial property antimicrobial antiviral and antifungal properties it has got an immunomodulatory effect because it can activate the t cell b cell natural killer cells it can also influence antibody production 
It also releases interferon and interleukin, which are effective against viral infections. It also helps in the phagocytosis and glycolysis induction. It also helps in T helper 17 polarization and secretion of IgM, IgE, IgE. It also, vitamin C also helps in, auto, in the process of autophagy by several mechanisms and it is it also has got an anti-diabetic and an anti-hyperglycemic effect so that helps to lower blood pressure and also reduce blood cholesterol it also reduces triglycerides now next is vitamin d vitamin d or the sunshine vitamin d as it is called it down regulates the expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines now these are some of the good sources of vitamin D are non-vegetarian sources such as egg yolk, then oily fish, then fish liver or meat liver, fortified foods such as fortified milk, fortified juice, then mushrooms, etc. Now vitamin D, it down regulates expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines which are responsible for lung injury. It also increases the activity of macrophages and decreases the viral replication rates. Now the active form of vitamin D that is calcitriol, it, has, it is a potent negative endocrine regulator of the renin angiotensin system whereby it down regulates the activity of renin. And it has been found that People, patients who have who have been treated with a daily dose of 10,000 IU per day of vitamin D3 for several weeks, so that their serum concentration is maintained at a level of 40 to 60 nanograms per ml, they have been shown to do better. And for us, the general public, since we are all we have all been advised to stay indoors because of the lockdown. The, our vitamin D content may be reduced because we are not exposing ourselves to sunshine. So it is important. It may be prescribed by doctors to take a vitamin D. So vitamin D supplement, vitamin D capsule so that our vitamin D level is maintained. Okay. Now, zinc plays an important role in fighting off COVID as Nilkantor showed you. ACE, it is a zinc dependent protein. Now there are different modes of action. This is how you can see in the slide. This is what are the functions, what happens due to zinc deficiency. Now zinc, it can, sorry, it can affect different stages of action of new, uh, of uh, the COVID-19. Now, as you can see in this slide, zinc deficiency risk factors it can cause lead to pneumonia acute respiratory distress syndrome it can also induce cause by aggravate ventilator induced injury this is as you can see zinc it increases mucociliary clearance then it also inhibits transcription for sars cov uh, replication it also reduces inflammation thereby it thereby preventing the cytokine storm which is increased due to the activity of the covid 19 virus and also it has got it causes antiviral immunity because it increases the secretion of gamma interferon Sorry. okay and also Zinc, it inhibits the activity of S pneumonia co-infection so that the uh, de development of pneumonia can be prevented. So it has been found that increasing zinc intakes may be useful against COVID-19 infection by reducing viral replication and reducing the effects of gastrointestinal and lower respiratory symptoms. Now, what is the the recommended intake it has been that is the recommended intake zinc intake is 30 to 50 grams per day that might 
aid in the control of RNA virus, such as influenza and coronaviruses. Now, next important is magnesium. Magnesium is the metal which is second most abundantly present after potassium in our body. And magnesium, it has been shown to lower circulating C-reactive protein levels, enhancing the plasma antioxidant capacity and down-regulating the genes which control the expression of IL-1 and TNF-alpha. Now, magnesium, it is also known as the calcium. It has got, has a known calcium channel blocking effect because magnesium, it can inhibit calcium influx in the immune competent cells, which limits the nuclear factor kappa beta activation, thereby cytokine production and resulting in systemic inflammation. Now, short term exposure to magnesium sulfate has been shown to effectively reduce the frequency of monocytes producing TNF-alpha and IL-6 under constructive and toll-like receptor-stimulated conditions, decreasing the cytokine gene and protein expression. Now, what is the recommended intake? Now, normal healthy individuals taking precaution to prevent infection or those experiencing mild COVID-19 symptoms may consider daily supplementation with less than equal to 350 milligrams of calcium, particularly if the dietary intake is low. And in, an retro, in a recent retrospective observation, it has been found that COVID-19 patients, they were above who were aged more than 50 years, there was fewer incidences of hospitalization who had been receiving daily oral vitamin D3 dosage of 1000 international units, 150 milligrams of magnesium and 500 micrograms of vitamin B12 supplementation for up to 14 days from day three to day 17 compared to the controls. Now, next we come to immunonutrients. Immunonutrients such as arginine and glutamine, they can also control some to COVID-19 infection to some extent because arginine, it is effective in wound healing by modulating the synthesis of nitric oxide because the activity of inducible nitric oxide synthase is triggered by many inflammatory stimuli and cytokines and glutamine it can control and preserve gut function, which is compromised in severe stress, decreasing the production of IL-6 and IL-8. Now, probiotics and polyphenols, these are also important components of any diet. Nowadays, we are talking, we are hearing a lot about them. Now, probiotic and polyphenol supplements, it can extinguish the cytokine storm in COVID-19 patients. When combined with proper antiviral treatment, because they help to restore the innate and adaptive immunity by correcting the alterations and in intestinal microbiota and equilibrating the TREC and T helper 17 cells, thereby maintaining the homeostasis between pro and anti inflammatory cytokines. Now, nutraceuticals, which are nutrients which have got a pharmaceutical effect they also play an important role. This is a list of nutraceuticals which can play an important role in fighting COVID. That is ferulic acid, lipoic acid, spirulina, selenium, glucosamine, zinc, etc. Now, these, all these, glucosamine, selenium, and acetyl uh, uh, cysteine, they might be expected to help to prevent coronavirus infections by amplifying the signaling functions of TLR7 and MAVs in evoking type 1 interferon production. Now, till now, I have talked to you about what are the different nutrients which might help to combat COVID and what are the needs of patients who are already, who have already been affected by COVID who are in the critical care systems or who are being undergoing rehabilitation. So what is the advice? 
we have to choose for our protein intake we have to choose both plant and animal based protein in order to maintain our protein intake and we sh we must have our daily servings of fruits fresh vegetables and meat etc they should be kept taken in moderation and we must try to eat as much as at home because in restaurants it may be crowded so that there may be always the fear of infection being infected from from other people that will remain so we, we are, and the norms of social distancing it cannot it may not be maintained when we go to eat out so it is better to keep to have eat at home in, in, instead of going out now adequate water intake is also crucial as this slide as in this slide you can see what is the recommended intake how many glasses of water one should take in order to protect oneself from covid 19 pandemic one should keep oneself hydrated and these are the glasses the number of glasses of water or the amount which you may have to take now this till now i had been talking to you about the nutritional requirements and the nutritional tips because we all know everyone agrees that good nutrition it is essential to fight against the pandemic it is very essential that we have a good we have good food we have got a high nutrient immunological status so that it can be easier for us to ward off any infection now the next part of my talk is maternal and child care during covid 9 pandemic now each and every woman and child or each and every person even men members they have got a right to have proper health care and as we can see this world health organization poster which is that before during and after childbirth while all women should have the right to high quality care and this consists of antenatal and intrapartum care care for the newborn postnatal care both for the baby and the mother and also the mental health of the mother now during this during this pandemic maternal and child health are at a direct risk because there have been breakdowns in supply or distribution of antenatal iron folic acid multiple micronutrients child vitamin a supplementation the distribution of oral rehydration salts and zinc which have been used for treatment of diarrhea and as a therapeutic food for home treatment of acute malnutrition and safe in-person treatment consultations this is because we are all aware that all the hospitals they are busy they are so much full with covid 19 patients that they are not treating the general patients patients who are suffering from other diseases so due to this reason there is not enough beds or not enough medical care is being provided to those pregnant women and children who are going to the hospitals okay most of the beds they are now dedicated to the covid 19 patients and also due to since the lockdown is in place though there are no restrictions on travel but people mothers expectant mothers or children they cannot take their children or family members they cannot take their ill patients to the hospitals because they do not have a transport to take them and also due to the in the fear of infection many of the people they are inhibited to take their loved ones to the hospitals for treatment and also in addition to this uh, uh, fa these factors there has also been a disruption in the midday meal program and the icds uh, uh, services which can affect numerous pregnant women lactating mothers and children because these icds program midday meal programs they provide cooked meals to the children children and also they take care of the mothers 
uh, and they are also involved in mass deworming and other healthcare programs. So this slide, it actually summarizes what are the effects, what are the drivers of acute and chronic malnutrition and what, how it is affected by COVID-19. If you see, the first one is deprioritized context and com compromised enablers. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as I told you, most of the attention of the government or other caregivers, it has gone to the COVID-19 patients. All effects are being directed to treat COVID-19 patients. So it has led to a decline in the amount of service that was provided to those people who are not suffering from COVID. Then also, what are the underlying risk drivers? There are reduced income and limited reduces, uh, limited resources. There is poor feeding practice and food insecurity, limited care and restricted health services, and also unhealthy food and environment. Now, as we are aware, many of the people, many of our fe fellow citizens, they have lost their jobs. They do not have an income. So they are forced to live on the rations which are being provided by the government free of cost. So people, they are not getting adequate amount of food. So as a result of which the nutrition of themselves and their children are being compromised. So, and also since in many slum areas, many people, there are 10 to 15, there may be 10 to 15 members in a family. So due to a lockdown, they have to be huddled in, in a small shanty because they are prevented from going out. So they have limited resources because they have to share a small space. They have to share a very small uh, sanita sanitation uh, what uh, sanitation facilities so they it may be limited and also so many people living in a very small space in a crowded uh, environment it can lead to many mental problems because we have seen an increase in the number of violence domestic violence both against children and also against women and if we consider what are the immediate risk drivers, they are poor dietary intake, higher disease with longer durations, and high risk of intergenerational transfer. Now, poor dietary intake is, we are advised, everyone is advising us to keep a proportion of protein in the diet. But as we know, proteins, all proteins, they are much higher, highly priced compared to carbohydrates. So people, they cannot, poor people, they cannot afford any fish, meat or eggs. Instead of that, they will try to just fill their stomach with rice, which is rich in calorie, but it is less in lesser in price compared to proteins. As a result of which there will be a deficiency of protein but there will be an increase in the amount of carbohydrate in the diet. So people for that same price, they will take, they will take, uh, they will have an intake of a lower quality of food. Uh, and they do, since they do not have, uh, have access to high nutrient dense foods. Also, they are so if people, they are exposed to such conditions, they can suffer from diseases for longer durations. And also, as I told you, there is high risk of intergenerational transfer that is due to compromised maternal health. Because since the programs which are associated, that is distribution of folic acid, vitamin D tablets, or healthcare systems, they, are, oh, they have been overburdened with uh, COVID-19 patients, the maternal health, the basic, uh, basic objective, the basic, uh, what should I say, the uh, basic things which were done for maintaining maternal health, they have been compromised, okay? And as a result of which, child nutrition, both child and maternal nutrition will be compromised, especially in children, we will find Children who have got stunted growth, there is wasting of muscles as a result of which there is 
they are underweight they are small for their gestational weight and also in the long term long run there may be maternal and child micronutrient deficiencies now so but if a mother she has given birth to her child so there may be questions whether a covid 19 affected mother can breastfeed her child or not now according to this world health organization it has been it has been said that women who have suffer, we are suffer, who are suffering from covid 19 they can breastfeed their baby if they wish to do so but they should practice respiratory hygiene and wear a mask they should wash hands before and after touching the baby and they should routinely clean and disinfect and disinfect surfaces and if a woman with covid 19 is too unwell to breastfeed then she can support to safely provide her baby with breast milk either by expressing milk or from relactation or using a donor milk because as we are all aware that the breast milk is the best for the baby's nutrition till they are six months of age so, so till now i had i am talking to you about what are the benefits what are the sources of these nutrients and so this is now this slide explains what are needed to be done in the different levels so that to support nutrition during the COVID-19 pandemic we can work at our individual level that is at the level of food utilization changes in eating behavior etc then it can be at the community level because as you know community and social food accessibility depend will depend on social support food availability Coding must be prevented. Then there is that at the national level, there must be well marked policies regarding food and agriculture. Then there should be policies regarding food marketing and media, food security, food assistance programs, and healthy food basket. And also at the global level, there should be food trade agreements between different countries, food distribution, shipping, different food standards. And also there should be research for and capacity building so that we can prevent further uh, infections, etc. Now, to conclude, improving our metabolic health could help us ward off future medical, economic, and social calamities from whatever pathogen next comes down the pike. And Touting the benefits of providing free medically tailored meals to food insecure patients and their families, it was noted that diet related diseases lead to suboptimal school and work performance, increased health costs, and lower productivity and wages. In other words, consuming a more wholesome diet is a win win investment. In addition to healthy eating, being physically active, Reducing stress and getting enough sleep will also support normal immune functioning. Hence, there is no better time to make it than now as the country begins to struggle to be, get back on a healthful footing. So, as we all know that healthy nutrition is important for the economic development of the country because it has been found in those countries, in those communities where people are malnourished, the benefits, the economic growth of that area or that country is less because improper nutrition that will give rise to malnourishment and uh, malnourishment related diseases. It will also give rise to a population who is weak, population members who are weak, who cannot work properly and so they cannot take part they cannot help in the growth of the economy of the country so with this i conclude that stay healthy eat better so and at the end food is not known to transmit covid 19 so you must enjoy your food to maintain a good physical and mental health 
and there are certain safety advice which we all follow that is we should wash raw fruits and vegetables with clean potable water the meat should be cooked well in order to prevent any food related infection we should stay hydrated and we should avoid food sharing food utensils water bottles or cups and we should you clean surfaces and tables with antibacterial bleach wipes we should use different knives for cutting raw meat and cooked foods and also at last we should eat food food which is rich in vitamin c d e magnesium selenium etc which i talked to you about thank you thank you dr shikdar thank you for briefly explaining the various nutritional requirements for maternal and child care during the covid 19 thank you dakshani thank you ma'am thank you sridharathan thank you thank you thank you ma'am can i leave If, uh, yes yes yeah, ma'am yeah, ma yes ma'am no ma problem if the audience have any questions you are kindly requested to post them in the chat box in youtube link we shall address them gradually and the solutions will be uploaded on the website thank you moving on the next speaker for today's session is professor debashish maiti i would request dr tripathi to kindly introduce professor maiti yes thank you dr maiti is a professor in department of human physiology tripura university he received a doctoral degree from university of calcutta he was post doctoral fellow at department of physiology texas tech university uh, health sciences center Lubbock, Texas, USA, and later in Department of Ophthalmology, John Hopkins University, Baltimore, Maryland, USA. He has received various awards and is member of several national and international bodies. He is the reviewer of various peer-reviewed journals, including Journal of Community Nutrition and Health, Asian Journal of Pharmaceuticals and Clinical Research, PLOS One, Molecular Cancer, Cytokine. Respiratory research, etc. Doctor Maiti, please. Thank you, Sri Tiruthun, for giving me the opportunity here in this platform to share something uh, related to COVID nineteen. And uh, I am going to talk about the protection. a prevention of covid 19 in human body and also the entry so if you see the structure of corona virus we have seen that they have capsule like structure and spike proteins over there and these spike proteins are the target of uh, whole world uh, scientist so that uh, it can be considered as antigen and against this the antibody can be formed and this spike proteins is uh, glycoproteins we can see this glycoproteins once they will attach in the host cells and then they can inject their uh, rna inside the host cells and this corona virus there are four main subgroupings are known as alpha beta gamma and delta and out of this uh, different subsites i mean uh, sub groups uh, mammalian corona viridi uh, mostly and birds uh, the uh, this corona virus um, i mean other other like beta and delta these type are not available in uh, mammals and uh, birds but uh, here corona virus is this uh, spike proteins their structures are uh, look like this and different proteins are considered 
for the antigenic property. And um, this, uh, I mean, all we know that uh, in 2019 from province, uh, Hubei province in China, it is discovered and then uh, they, are, uh, they have the positive sense, single standard, and uh, they have spike protein membrane and uh, this uh, uh, spike protein and membrane proteins are, are transmembrane proteins uh, in uh, it is used for the assembly of the uh, uh, assembly after replications and then it can come out from the host cells though the nuclear uh, protein is largely involved in process relating to the viral uh, genome it is also involved in other aspects in the cob replication cycle and the host cellular uh, response to viral infection how it can transmit uh, in general it is known that through droplets it is transmitting from human to human other way these uh, viruses can stay in the environment for the time being but the duration of this time is not yet confirmed that how long they can stay some of the literature is saying that uh, six to seven hours some of the literature is saying that it differ from different uh, surface like uh, metal plastic uh, skin in that way it differed uh, their survival in this environment but it can transmit easily from human to human and from one family once it will enter and easily can transmit to other members of this family the some of the uh, uh, i mean clue has come that some people are uh, claiming that through air also it can transmit but not yet confirmed but uh, i mean so, uh, different research work do not confirm the city now how does this covid 19 enter in human body most of the time this if it is like droplets or through air it can transmit from uh, human to human initially it has to come in the surface of the human body and this surface is human body covered by the skin and it's the most longest uh, I mean, um, part of the body. And there, in the skin, directly it cannot enter, but through different pores, mainly the nostrils. And there are certain cells which are responsible to attach these virus and then can engulf them. And those cells contains two different types of receptors ACE2 and TMPR cases 2 these two type of receptors are the novel uh, are the responsible which can help them to enter into the cells once they will come through the nostrils by droplets then in the nostrils they can stay for the time being but within that time if somebody can take some hot air or uh, water gargling this cannot survive in this temperature hot water or hot air so it can be uh, eliminated from there and also other factor is the density how much virus particles are there that also depends that it will enter and it can stay it can develop the disease and once they will cross this area and the first portions of the respiratory system then it will start to develop the disease. 
So the researchers have found that AC2 is a receptor protein which serves COP2 anchors itself. Thereafter, TMPRSS2 activates entry of the virus into the, uh, in the body cell. The function of the TMPRSS2 is to degrade the viral protein. And then it will help it to uh, allow the virus to fuse their membrane with the host cell membrane so that their genetic material can get entry in the host cells. So two specific type of host cells like goblet and ciliated cells in the nose make the organ extremely susceptible to the novel coronavirus. And they have a very high density of the facilitating proteins, which are otherwise essential molecules for human body functions, their own purpose. You see, C2 and PMPR SS2 are also found in good numbers in the cornea cells of human eyes. This makes eyes and tear ducts potential entry points of novel coronavirus. The mouth is directly linked with the nose and lungs, making it another gateway for the entry of the uh, novel coronavirus. Presence of enabling proteins in heart tissues could be possible explanation why novel coronavirus is more lethal for people with pre-existing cardiac problems. Now, these, as I mentioned, those cells, ciliated cells and the goblet cells, once they, they will bound, so now this, these are sensitive to the coronavirus, the membrane of the cells. And this, uh, this membrane will fuse with the enzymes once TMPR SS2, which is located in this uh, uh, area, they can degrade the uh, viral protein. And they, uh, these are basically protease type um, uh, uh, protein. And then fusion will allow them to uh, 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 send their genetic material inside the cells. And now uh, nasal passages to airway epithelial cells uh, contains this type of cells, so they will allow to attach first. Mucous membranes of the throat and bronchial tube also contains this type of cells. Alveolar epithelial cells or uh, uh, pneumocytes, acute respiratory uh, distress syndrome will uh, arise loss of lung surfactant will be there, inflammation can occur, oxidative stress will occur. And here in this picture you can see the ciliated cells, generally the cilia will remove, they will not allow to attach, they will uh, uh, remove the dust particles uh, as well as uh, any foreign particles can enter and attach in these portions. But once they have a specific receptor, they can bind. And then once they will bind, they can take it into the uh, uh, trachea. So in the first part of this respiratory system, as well as in this part also, bronchiolar and alveoli portions, they, uh, their uh, population is there and their ACE2 expression is very high. So in that portions, easily they can uh, attach and can finally enter. So other portions of the body, you can have uh, pneumocytes, intestine, kidney, heart, endothelial cells, cerebral cortex, striatum, hypothalamus, brain stems. They also express ACE2 and TMPR, SS2. And here you can see the this protein can bind ACE2 and this will uh, degrade those proteins and allow them to uh, get entry in the host cells. Now, airways expression of SARS-CoV-2 receptor, AC2 and TMPRSS2 is lower in children than adults and increases with smoking and COPD. So these um, smoking cases, the AC2 and the TMPRSS2, they are very sensitive. But, uh, and also the expression is very high in adult than the uh, child. So uh, if you see the statistics um, in child infection is very less in number. 
than uh, adult. And also in uh, asthma, they are vulnerable because of this uh, expression of ACE2, hypertension. Also, uh, the expression is high and uh, show the uh, attachment uh, will uh, be higher and then uh, uh, the uh, entry will be higher. Why the disease is so dangerous in older people? Because older people, they have several factors which are against the potent immune system or active immune system. So that's why they are vulnerable and these are dangerous to them. For example, youthful system, immune system, once the virus will attach, then it will enter and immune cells which are active, also in the respiratory system, you have the macrophages and other immune cells are there and they are active. And in the alveolus, once they will enter, they will try to engulf them and then uh, activate the both, not only the innate immune system, adaptive immune system will be activated. And in the adaptive immune system, you have the two types of T cells, helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. Directly cytotoxic T cells can kill them. I mean, they means the infected cells, infected uh, host cell and CD4 or uh, helper T cells will accumulate other immune cells and to activate B cells to produce antibody against the antigen showing by this COVID-19. But for aged system, this is degraded or uh, suppressed conditions. It is called immunosenescence. So as day will go, aged people, they have lower active immune system. Active sim sy immune system is much less than youthful system. So though there are certain macrophages or innate immunity are there, some immune cells will be there, they can engulf them and uh, the antigen can be processed and, and can be uh, displayed. But still, the development of antibody will take some time for the aged people as it is senescent. And uh, that's why immunosenescence is another cause to be uh, fatal for the older people, this uh, COVID uh, infection. And a lot of uh, cytokines will be released. And in these cytokines will have their separate functions, not only for the inflammations, other way to activate other immune cells, they have uh, other functions also. And the cytokines, uh, is, uh, I mean, the release of different cytokines, huge amount of cytokines, is, uh, called cytokine storm will be there. And that is another cause for the old people to be uh, the dangerous for this uh, COVID-19. And also like uh, altered coagulation process. And once the coagulation process will be altered, uh, I mean, the bleeding time in general increase, or it may have some uh, uh, problem to uh, uh, coagulations. And uh, bleeding, internal bleeding may have uh, caused, uh, may happen during infections. And that is uh, fatal for the older people. So these are uh, different uh, cause for the older people why they are um, sensitive to this COVID-19. And this is the life cycle of the SARS-CoV-2. Once they will enter, the RNA will be released. And this RNA, genomic RNA will be 
uh, they will make the uh, poly polymerase protein and that will translate um, RNA replications starts and from there they will have a, a subgenomic or genomic RNA and by the transcription process different parts of the virus like nucleocapsid membrane envelope spike proteins will be formed and through the endoplasmic reticulum as well as the Golgi intern, com, internal com, uh, uh, compartment they will assemble together and finally they will make uh, make and uh, package them in a in a viral capsule and then it will be released and it will infect the other virus other uh, host cell again so this is the total uh, cycle inside the cells but once they are inside the host cells at that time the cytotoxic T cells, they can recognize this cell is infected. And through um, two different proteins, parforin granjine. So this parforin will make whole and this granjine will enter inside this uh, host cell. And these are toxic. And finally, the cell will be destroyed, uh, is, will go for apoptosis. As the cell will go for apoptosis, the old virus who has copied there or replicate inside the uh, host cells will uh, be destroyed. So that is direct uh, effect of the cytotoxic T cells. The other way, T helper cells, CD4 cells, they can engage these cytotoxic T cells. First, they will activate the cytotoxic T cells. And next, they will engage other cells through uh, antigen presenting cells, activate the B cells. And specific, for a specific antigen, the B cell will produce the antibody. But there you have some problems like as we know that we have five different species of the COVID-19 are there uh, around the whole world and they can do the mutation. Once mutation will be there, then the protein will be changed. And if the protein change, then antibody cannot recognize this protein. And maybe one person is infected with a virus and after a certain time, the, uh, uh, the person is recovered from these viral infections. And so the person contains antibody as well as some memory cells, which can recognize the same virus again if they can enter inside the, uh, uh, into that person again. But the thing is that if the next time, same virus, just after mutation can enter into the body so the protein will be changed and they, that protein may not be recognized by these memory cells and if they cannot recognize this memory cell cannot work anymore so then it will be another problem again the antibody has to be uh, uh, translated from the b cell antibody will be formed again and again, new memory cell against that particular antigen will be formed and then it will fight against the virus. So that's why the people are afraid that uh, maybe this, I mean, we are looking for uh, 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 vaccines and vaccine will uh, form uh, or prepare some memory cells and antibody inside body and uh, then we are okay. Virus cannot enter because our body already have the antibody. But how long they will stay there? Maybe level of antibody will not stay for a long time, maybe one month or two months, maybe three months. And if after three months, the level of antibody decreases, and then again infection occurs, 
the T cell, only the memory cells can help them immediately. So memory cell will start to activate the B cells and produce the antibody against that virus. But the thing is that if that is another type, like after mutations, the new protein comes, then this memory cell will be of no help. So that's why uh, the, the vaccine will be very much um, effective whole population there is no guarantee about that and though we are looking uh, several side effects are there and these side effects will not happen in one and two months or, or six months it may happen i mean chronic effects will be there and that's why it requires time to develop and if you go for the history for several vaccines you have a uh, long time to develop the vaccines but because you have to check the side effects also and um now uh, the fatality risk two difference like low risk and high risk who has the control immune system have very low risk and who has the uh, uh, immune system is not really controlled like old people they have high risk and this is due to different factors like epigenetic regulations so once this virus will enter and they can produce the their rna and they can change the host cell uh, uh, genetic systems if that happens then they will be they can cause dangerous epigenetic dysregulation will be there and old old people immune system is not controlled and can also uh, not in a stage to fight properly with this virus and when it will fight properly if the chronic, uh, chronological age is uh, bigger, but the biological is smaller, what, what are those things? Biological age is bi several biological markers are there to measure the biological age. Like by different activity, biologically, if they are active, then the chronological age is like from the birth to this uh, uh, time, uh, 40 years, uh, 50 years, 60 years old, from the birth, if you count mathematically. who is 50 years old, but different diet, food habits, exercise, make them like 30 years old. So the biological age is less than the chronological age. In that case, the immune system is much more active and it can uh, defeat those type of infections. Several other factors like zero protectors who, who, which are maintaining or uh, maintaining the biological is like melatonin and other different types of factors are there which will not uh, increase the uh, biological age, which will not allow to increase the biological is or the aging or chronological age will be uh, the chronological age will go as uh, uh, i mean mathematically but the biological uh, age will be will also help to uh, fight against this virus and ob obviously the lifestyle but once the chronological age 
is uh, lower, but the biological age is higher. That may happen. Like one person who has a lot of work to do and is in stress. And uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, diet, exercise are very less. So in that case, biological age is bigger than the chronological age. And then uh, there is a chance to affect by this type of virus and other environmental factors like uh, humidity, temperatures and other things are there to, uh, I mean, affect the infections. And in um, here you can see this COVID-19 uh, the effect in uh, COVID-19 for uh, different uh, type of um, like immunosenescence, what I have mentioned, the old age of immune system, which is not active, epigenetic changes, advanced biological age, changes to the uh, uh, glycome, dysregulated renin angiotensin system, NADN loss, inflammation activations, inflammaging changes in T cell diversity causes, uh, I mean, sensitivity to these uh, COVID-19 and then uh, may have different symptoms. Why the infection is a double challenge to the people with diabetes. Diabetes patients have impaired immune response in relation to cytokine profile and to changes in immune response, including T cells and macrophage activation. Poor glycemic control impairs the immune response to viral infection and bacterial secondary infections in the lungs. Type 2 diabetes patients are obese, the abnormal secretions of adipokines and cytokines like TNF alpha and interferon characterize a chronic low grade in abdominal obesity and may induce an impaired immune system. People with severe abdominal obesity also have mechanical respiratory problem with reduced ventilation of the basal lung section because of the abdomen. Maximum space is covered due to obesity and uh, uh, this mechanical uh, ventilation will be disturbed uh, uh, for the lung that will increase the risk of pneumonia as well as reduced oxygen saturations of blood. And to protect, you have to do avoid exposure, increase immune response, and by the vaccine development. So increase immune response is only the way you can fight. And to do this, other things like avoid exposure and vaccine development, that will help, but the, there is no guarantee. Like if you go to the market, you can be exposed because a lot of asymptomatic patients are roaming around. So from them, you can access this virus. Though you are very careful about these things. You are uh, taking all type of precautions. Still, you may expose due to the asymptomatic um, patients. And then maybe end of this year or uh, first part of the next year, we have the vaccine. But as I have mentioned, what is the guarantee that the virus will not change or mutate? If the virus change their genetic character or mutation is there, so this uh, uh, vaccine may not work. I mean, the memory cell which is produced uh, in this vaccine may not work to develop the antibody against this mutated virus. I mean, may not. So, the, the thing is that there is no guarantee about these things. But if the immune response is very active, then the fight against the virus will be 
much easier. So uh, where we are for the treatment of this patient? So around uh, scientists around the world are working on potential treatments and vaccines for the new coronavirus disease known as uh, COVID-19. Several companies are working on antiviral drugs, some of which are uh, already in use against other illnesses to treat people who already have COVID-19. Other companies with 100 projects are working on vaccines that could be uh, used as a preventive measure against the disease. And finally, the heart immunity. Heart immunity is the mechanism by which 60 to 70 percent of the population will be infected and they will have the antibody against the virus. And once they will have the antibody against the virus, then the virus will not uh, find any people who are sensitive. Most of them are already infected and have the antibody. So immediate antibody can protect them. And then out of uh, these 100 percent people, maybe 30 to 40 percent people, they still do not have the viral infections. They, uh, the virus cannot get them to uh, infection. So that is hard immunity. Indirectly, they are safe because most of the people can save them. Most of the people already have uh, the antibody. This develop, I mean, the uh, production of antibody in the body, human body, it may have due to the previous infections of the virus or due to the vaccine. Anyway, the body already raised the antibody inside this. So the virus cannot infect anymore and then the hard uh, immunity will come. The FDA and USA issued an emergency use authorization in March for the uh, antimalarial drugs, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, but later revoked it for the treatment of this virus. In a review of British Journal of Pharmacology, scientists from UK identified three stages of infection at which the virus could be targeted, keeping the virus from entering our cells, preventing it from replicating inside the cells, and minimizing the damage that the virus does to the organs. Remdesivir is one drug, is being tested in many COVID-19 clinical trials around the world alongside anti-inflammatory drug uh, bedicitinib. At the same time, another study published in the Lancet reported that participants in a, cloni uh, a clinical trial who took remdesivir showed no benefits compared to people who took a placebo. So they uh, uh, denied to take this rem uh, remdesivir anymore. The FDA has announced a process for medical facilities to conduct trials on experimental treatment that uses blood plasma from people who are recovered from COVID-19. The theory is that their plasma contains antibodies that will attack this particular coronavirus. In late May, researchers reported that 19 to 25 people with COVID-19 who were treated with uh, con convalescent plasma transfusion at uh, Houston Methodist Hospital in Texas had improved. In mid-June, UK researchers announced that the inexpensive corticosteroid dexamethasone reduced deaths by about a third in people with uh, severe COVID-19 who were on ventilators and by a fifth in those who needed oxygen support. On June 15, the FDA revoked that authorization, citing studies that indicated hydroxychloroquine didn't significantly help people in COVID-19 and may have caused serious health risk. In late July, scientists in the Brazil announced that hydroxychloroquine given alone or with other drugs did not improve the conditions of people hospitalized with mild to moderate COVID-19 illness. So out of these different kinds of drug, rather the antibody who are already infected, that antibody, the serum containing the antibody are much more positive effect. Because the drugs like remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, dexamethasone, all these things, some people, they are thinking that it is working. But you know that uh, this is complex system which is working and which is not working inside the human body and due to what factor 
is not a totally clear picture. But the antibody who already suffered, that antibody can work and they can. And still, here is also one question. If the, the species is same, then only it will work. Now, the, now about the vaccine where we are waiting for, uh, it is designed to protect people before they were exposed to, uh, exposed to, uh, to a, uh, microorganisms. Here, the SARS-CoV-2 is the organism. Vaccine basically trains the immune system to recognize and attack the microorganism when it uh, encounters it. And we know that for the influenza, each year we had to take the vaccine. Because for the influenza virus, they have different part which can change each year. The, uh, the outside molecules. And this molecule, by uh, combining, I mean, permutation combination way, they can produce a huge number of protein. It's uh, more than 100 types of protein. So these different types of protein can, cannot be protected by single type of vaccines. So for the influenza, before this uh, COVID-19, we had to take uh, each year the vaccine for this influenza. So how come we are expecting that? Uh, one vaccine will come and that will save whole uh, world. There is a doubt about that things. I think maybe as, as uh, five different types of uh, viruses are there in whole world, so it may not help whole world for the same uh, vaccines. So we now have vaccines to prevent more than 20 life-threatening diseases helping people and now we are all also expecting for the vaccines against the COVID-19. Generally, uh, vaccines are prepared uh, uh, by whole organism, attenuated viral or bacterial vaccines, like the virus will be cultured in a cell which is not their normal host. So in that conditions, they have to mutate and after a certain time, this culture will be maybe 10 generation or 15 generation. In that conditions, they will have change in their uh, uh, genetic material. And that uh, change may reduce or abolish the total pathogenicity. And now the whole organism can be used in animal, whether they, have, they are pathogenic anymore or not. If they are not pathogenic, but their uh, structure is same, then whole organism can be used as vaccine. Now purified macromolecule of the pathogen, specific macromolecule, not the whole uh, microorganisms, rather only the part of the uh, um, uh, organism, only the macromolecule can be isolated, which is uh, considered as antigen and can be used as the vaccines. Recombinant vector can be used like in different kinds of uh, uh, vector, we can use a specific gene for the virus, which is uh, which considered as the uh, pathogenic or, or li like antigenic, not the pathogenic, antigenic in nature. So that uh, uh, gene sequence can be introduced into the vector and that vector can be uh, used in uh, mammalian cells. And then uh, uh, that protein will be produced and the immune system will be activated against the particular protein. Direct DNA also can be used but here the virus is RNA, so this option is closed. Now synthetic peptide can be produced, like only the that particular protein, which is uh, considered as antigen against that uh, gene, the protein can be produced and that protein can be synthesized outside and can be used. So different uh, options are there to produce the preparation of vaccines. And um, here are, uh, are different in India, you have uh, Bharat Biotech, National Institute of Virology. Together, they are making the co-vaccine is in uh, trial phase, phase one. And uh, Jacob D, Jidas Cadilla, uh, they are uh, in phase one and two stage. Uh, this is also uh, DNA vaccine, uh, plasmid DNA. 
the uh, containing the vector so a specific sequence of the rna can be introduced here in the vector and then can be uh, uh, produce the vaccine and um inactivated vaccines in uh, china henan provincial center for the disease control and prevention they are uh, in in phase 3 conditions um ministry of science and technology of china uh they are researchers in sinopharm and the wuhan institute of virology under the chinese academy of science are developing this inactivated covid-19 vaccine candidate in another and corona vac is a sponsor is sinovac and this is in phase 3 trial uh, sinovac research and development company limited they are producing uh, uh, by is a formalin inactivated and alarm ad, uh, adjuvanted can recandidate vaccine results from animal studies showed partial or complete protection in macaques monkey exposed to sars cov2 and then they have tested it uh, this is in uh, phase 3 trial moderna they are uh, using the mrna 1273 this is also in phase 3 uh the institution kaiser uh, permanent washington health research institute and bcg live attenuated vaccines this is also in uh, trial phase 2 and 3 mirodoc children's research institute umc uptrek and uh, here uh, the oxford university of oxford and astrazeneca AJD one triple two, they are uh, uh, in phase two and three trial, uh, which we are expecting that in India also we can get this. And uh, Pfizer, BioNTech, their uh, their vaccine is BNT one six two. It is also in phase two and three uh, trial. Is a. <coughs> uh, multiple study sites in europe and uh, north america is done so this is our whole scenario now for vaccines and in protection so if you have any questions i can take it thank you so much for the organizer uh, to give me the chance to here to talk thank you so much thank you professor maiti for the extensive talk on the various aspects of covid-19 and the human interactions and their prevention thereof uh, i would request the audience to write down any questions and queries they have in the chat box in youtube and we will get back to them later on thank you once again thank you with this we come to the end of the first session of the day we shall be resuming the second session at 5 pm sharp thank you recording to stop korte hobe ha bolchi anup da ke bolchi Anupda, please. Anupda, recording to stop code to have it.